Hey everyone, so welcome back to part two of another uh, Brain Booster series. Uh, so this series is covering open item management in SAP by design. Uh, good news is I won't show you any PowerPoints today, um, but in the previous video we did explain what open item management is for and we did have a deck. Uh, so really briefly, um, if you do want to go back and watch that, please go to the Vistaview Solutions uh, website and look at our resource page or you can search for our YouTube channel and you can look for part one of this series on open item management. So today we're going to go and look in at how to set up open item management and how to enter a simple transaction using it in its easiest form. So what we discussed last week is potentially you might use this for something like an employee advance or a prepaid account where you will have multiple or many transactions going through that account and you need some way to reconcile debits and credits that go through at different periods in order to know which one's cleared out and more importantly, which ones are remaining to substantiate that balance. So let's get started. So we're logged into SAP right now. I'm gonna take you into actually setting up a new account. We could activate open item management for an existing account, doesn't really matter, but this way we'll have a really clean example. So I'm gonna choose the General Ledger Work Center. I'm gonna to go to my General Ledger accounts. And here we can see that there is an open item management. It's actually probably the second column and it's telling you which fields are set up for open item management. So you can see in this case, we've got credit card staging is set up um prepaid expenses uh strangely enough employee advances is not uh, but we're going to set up a brand new account we'll just call it something slightly different so that you can see exactly how that's done so i'm going to go into my edit chart of accounts um you know we're not here today to really show you how to set up new gl accounts so we're just going to do something really quick and simple so i'm going to go into my us chart of accounts and I believe we were in the 118s. So we'll probably set up a new account, something like 1186. And we wanna make sure that we've got this checkbox turned on. So one little trick I could do here is I could filter into the rough area that I wanna look at. Because when you hit add row, it always kind of adds it right at the top and you can't always see the numbers um, of what the account is. So if I do one one, do something like 118600, we'll call this employee loans. Uh, we're not going to, we want to make sure that we can do all postings. So this is not a control account. We did mention that in part one. So if you're not sure what that's about, feel free to watch that video. We're going to turn on open item management. And in this case, we're going to say that this is another asset account. And we will save and close. And then we should have this new account available to us for posting. And I'm just going to do this in our US chart of accounts. We'll do a US journal entry, keep things really clean and simple. So it's not confusing, but of course, if you are running multiple sets of books, multiple charts of accounts, um, depending on your configuration in the system, you could post this simultaneously and be using open item management in all of your books at the same time. So now that we've got the account there, let's go in and just do a really simple. So I'm going to go to my new journal entry voucher. Uh, and you can see the last entry I did was to the US book, so it remembers that. So I wanna make sure I'm specifying that books because that's where that GL account is. We're gonna do it for our current period. And we're gonna, so we'll do something like employee. Actually, let's do our credit side of our entry first. So maybe we will, for this, we'll just say that this is a payroll type entry that we're loading into the system because that is a, a real life scenario. So our credit may be in like our payroll clash cash clearing and we'll do something like $1,500 here. And then we'll do our employee advance. Sorry, employee loan. Take that out and try it again. So that's our new account. And let's do a, you know, $500 advance. And this is where at this point we have this ability now to set a flag to tell us a bit more about what the open item reference is going to be. And so that field is available right here. And you'll see that you've got a drop down that you can invoke. This is showing us what's been previously entered through open item references. But because this is a brand new account, we want to create a new reference. So the reference uh, we're going to specify, we're going to leave it at the existing year. So let's just say this advance was for Wilson. We're going to choose OK. You can put in the employee number, whatever makes sense for you here. This is a free key field. 
but it's going to create that reference in the system for offsetting the credit later on. And that's the whole idea here. And so if we were to add another row, and maybe for this one, let's use that other employee account just to illustrate something. So if we did that employee advances, you'll recall that account was not set with open item management, therefore create button is not available. So it's not really letting us set an open item reference. So just keep that in mind. So in order for this to be meaningful, you're gonna make, make sure you do a separate um, row for each record that you wanna reconcile. Okay, so we'll say this one was for Smith, got a $600 loan, and then we'll add one last one. Okay, and then another reference. So for Mr. Houston, we've got another advance for 400 and that should bring us into balanced. If we want to double check, we can simulate this and we can see this is the reference or this is the journal entry the system's proposing. So we're going to go back and we're now going to post this. So journal entry was posted. It looks just like another journal entry, except we have put in those references. So how does this data become meaningful to us? It's through the reporting in SAP by design. So we're going to go back to our general ledger work center. We're going to go to our reports and a report that you may be familiar with, because if you do account reconciliations, you probably use it all the time is called GL account line items. But you can see there's a variation of this report with called open item management. So let's run this variation instead. And now we can see when we run this report, it's giving us our breakdown by journal entry. This report's very similar to the other GL account reports. So of course you can go in here and you can add whatever other fields, all of the um, fields for the GL report are available here. Um, but what comes out of the box, it's pretty straightforward and this works for us. So these all comes from the same journal entry and here we can see our entries and essentially our detailed breakdown of what was input based on each of those open item references. So let's keep this open. Let's go back. Let's say some time has passed. We've gone through another pay cycle and now some of those loans are being paid back. So we're going to do another journal entry. So I believe actually it's called payroll cash clearing. So $600 and obviously your payroll entry is going to be much more complex than this. We're just keeping this really simple. We're going to do our employee loans and we're going to put in our 600 and now we need to associate it. We don't want to create it because we already have one here. So we just have to invoke this pop-up list and this is where we can now select the person. So I want to talk a little bit about some of the limitations in the system here. These are things that I don't love about it. So it's not showing us what was originally entered. Um, that's a good thing and a bad thing because maybe Smith is going to pay this loan back in installments. And so you're not necessarily going to repay the entire loan. So for example, you could have entered just $100, whatever you want, and it would have drawn down on it. But it might be nice to see that here. Something else you probably noticed is it's not going to force us to put in an open item reference, which can cause some situations where now we have entries going into this open item managed account without references. So I'm going to show you in a future session how we can um, resolve some of those issues. Um, but just be aware of that, that you're going to want to put in some human controls here. So I'm going to choose my Smith and I'm just going to post this simple repayment entry back into the system. And then we're going to go back to our GL report. We're going to refresh it. And so now we can see that the Smith one has been, you know, reimbursed. So what that means is essentially this item is no longer open in the system. So 
So having our open item reference showing on this report is going to help you understand uh, which items have cleared out. And then it's a matter of just uh, resorting or repivoting the report in order to help you with that reconciliation. So if I take my open item reference, for example, and let's move it to the top of the report, then it's going to group those together. Um, maybe rather than seeing debits and credits, we could add the balance field as well. So now we've got our balances. And because we have a subtotal for each of those open item references, we can clearly see which ones have zeroed out and which ones are still owing back to the organization. So that gives you a quick idea, a very simple way that you can um, create an open item reference GL account, create journal entries against those open item references, and then use the standard reporting in order to help you reconcile. So in part three of this session, uh, join us and we will have a look at a bit more sophistication that you can add to this um, using um, assigning open items sort of after the fact by getting open items into those GL accounts through other subledgers. So we'll see you soon in our next session.